In part 10 of the 2022 Canes Opponent Preview Series, we're going to preview the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, our opponent, up in Atlanta on November 12th. Well, what can you say about Georgia Tech? Look, this team should be a whole lot better than what they are. It seems their trips to, the, to Charlotte in 2012 and 2014, I'm sorry, the ACC Championship, that seems light years away under Jeff Collins, who's had, who's had three win seasons the last three years. And it's, here's something even worse. Since the final year of Paul Johnson in 2018, 22 of their 29 losses were by double digits. Okay? And add to the fact that you lose to both Notre Dame and Georgia last year by a combined 100 to nothing, that's a problem. Listen, Jeff Collins has had to change a lot from the triple option of Paul Johnson to a more balanced offense of a pro style. But that's the offense now. Okay, we, I can excuse the offense, but the defense, come on. It should be a whole lot better. Jeff Collins did not forget how to coach. This guy took Temple to two straight bowl games in Philadelphia and 15 wins in the last two seasons before leaving Philadelphia for Atlanta. But you got to catch a break at some point. And in the offseason, they had big changes in the coaching staff. And you get several people in the portal, but you still need a reboot now four years into the Jeff Collins era in Atlanta. Let's take a look at Atlanta. Let's look at the offense. Now, while Paul Johnson's offense might have not been perfect, it, was, it took control of games when it had to, and it gave defenses an extra element to have to prepare for. This offense the last three years has been nothing like that. Put it this way, they were 93rd in the nation last year. 20, average 24 points per game, and it couldn't keep the chains moving. Okay, But they have some things they can build on. Yes, they have a lot of young parts, and Chip Long knows how to get an offense moving. And they have a very good quarterback in Jeff Sims. He has two years under his belt in that offense. And there is some that think he can have a breakout season as an all-around playmaker if he can keep the turnovers down, i.e. the picks. The one that, should, that could push him is Akron transfer Zach Gibson. But this is going to be Sims' offense. This is going to be Sims' job. Their leading receiver is Mal Mal Malachi Carter, and he's a pro prospect, but they got to use him a lot more. 37 receptions for 489 yards and two touchdowns last year. You combine him with Kalani Norris, a deep threat who, can, who has a lot of promise and a lot of upside. He averaged 17 yards of reception on eight tackles. There's speed there, and they have to replace three starters on the offensive line. You gave up too many plays in the backfield. You only had a you only pushed for 169 per game. Uh, Pierce Quick is a is a possible starting tackle that comes in from Bama. Paul Ticchio is a guard from Clemson. R.J. Adams from Kentucky on the interior, and you have a tackle option from Kansas and Corey Robinson. The backs have a lot of upside, but they lose Jameer Gibbs to Bama. And it doesn't help that Jordan Mace is in the NFL trying, trying to be a 49er. But they have Dante Smith back, who averaged 5.6 yards a carry, and they have Louisville transfer and Hassan Hall, who's going to be a factor. Now, getting Dylan McDuffie from Buffalo in the Porter helps. Let's look at their defense. Now, while the offense gets all the attention because that's been the biggest change in now the four years of Jeff Collins, the defense was abysmal. My goodness, it's, it can only go up. To put it this way, they were 11th in the conference last year, and they couldn't stop the run. And it was dead last in pass efficiency in the nation. And losing Quest Jackson and safety Juan Thomas to the NFL doesn't hurt. Actually hurts. And you lose their best ends in Jordan Dominic to Arkansas and Javid Ivey to Ole Miss. There's a lot of work to do. So what, what do they have that works? Let's see what does work. 
They have a good tackler in 232-pound senior, Allende Alvi, in the middle, and outside linebacker Charlie Thomas, after leading the team with 10 tackles for loss. They have that veteran rock back there in that 425. Okay, they have that. Now, on the interior, there's, there's some stars there. And they hope the transfer from Old Dominion, Keon White, can really make some noise on the interior of that line. He's back from an ankle injury he suffered last year. And they're getting instant help at the secondary when they bring in Eric Reed from Auburn and Kenny Bennett from Maryland. And you have a transfer from Notre Dame and Derek Allen at safety in Michigan corner, Miles Sims. That's a that's a secondary that can re that can do some damage. The only and they had a grand total last year of three interceptions on defense. Okay, three interceptions. That's no that's no bueno. That's no bueno for Georgia Tech. The next thing we got to look at here is move the chains. Very simple, right? Move the chains. When Paul Johnson was in charge of that offense, that option attack. Controlled the clock, went on long drives, and did a tremendous job on third downs, converting on third downs, and everything else was humming from there. When it struggled like it did in 15, it went downhill. And, and when you're above 40% on third downs, that was the norm under Paul Johnson. But in two of the last three seasons under Jeff Collins, that has not been the case. They were under 36% in seven of the last 10 games to end 2021. Simple. The offense has to stay on the field and the defense has to take the ball away. Listen, the offense isn't going to be one that really lights you up for 40 to 50 points a game consistently. But it's functional and it needs to be functional. See, the defense has to give the offense as many breaks as possible. And it has to create positive plays when they get the ball. That you know, while it forced multiple turnovers, it only did so three times last year. It did it did force three takeaways against Kennesaw, Carolina, and us. Two of those, two of the three, two of the three wins on the year, and just four in the last in the other nine games. But the biggest problem was a secondary secondary that generated just one interception. The other two came from Charlie Thomas. There were two picks against Kennesaw, one against Duke, and that was it for the least efficient pass defense in the country. That's got to change for Georgia Tech. Their key player, of course, is Jeff Sims. You can name either player on either line who needs to step up, but very simple. If Jeff Sims is healthy, he has to be a big difference maker. If he stays healthy, he can do a lot of damage. He was strong. Mid-season last year, but he missed the first, missed, the, missed most of the first few games and missed the final three. Now, while he wasn't always accurate, he's had a problem with picks the first two years. The tools are there, along with experience. And with a new style of attack, he's got to step up. It's got to be his team. He's got to be the one that really takes it to the next level. The key transfer coming in is Hassan Hall. Yes, Jameer Gibbs has gone to Bama. And he's a possible first-round pick in 2023. But Dante Smith is a, vet, is a good veteran back. But it needs more options now with Gibbs gone. Buffalo transfer, you have Dylan McDuffie's going to help them there. He ran for 1,049 yards and 11 touchdowns in Buffalo last year. Hall is a four-year veteran who ran for close to 1,300 yards while at Louisville. This is his chance to really do some damage this year. Now, while there's several ACC games that's going to matter, of course, when you look at look at their, their key game, their key game is going to be at UCF September 24th. I mean, like a bowl game. They have to have early wins. Within the first five weeks, Clemson to open the season, Ole Miss, and a trip to Pittsburgh within the first five weeks, if you lose at UCF September 24th, it'll be a one and four stop with the lone win coming against Western Carolina without... A big upset of note. Yes, they're winnable games, but coming up with four wins in the final seven games might be due with a few breaks. Five of the last seven isn't 
for the last five on the road. That's a different story. Now, opponents outscored Georgia Tech in the first half last year, 245 to 143. In the red zone, opponents converted 61% of their chances there. Georgia Tech just 49%. Here's a, here's a stat that really, really sticks out at you. Georgia Tech's opponents had 10 picks returned for 154 yards. Georgia Tech only three for six yards. Now here's what's got to happen next. Okay, let's look at Georgia Tech. Now, yes, it's frustrating in Atlanta. Jeff Collins is trying everything he can in the post-Johnson area, and nothing's working. Yes, the offense has been mediocre. The defense has been terrible, even though the fight is there. They just haven't had the results over the first three years in Atlanta. Even after everything he's done to try to get the, op the, the program back to where it needs to be, they're in the other, They're trying everything they can to get it going, but uh, and, and, and it's still in another reboot. Yes, they're going to have a good starting 22 total. And this might be a, a team as a dark horse that could pull off something here and there. But for some bizarre reason, they just want to... They didn't want to put some winnable games there. Now, the win, the win total is at three and a half. Western Carolina, that's it. If you say Duke, say you make sure Temple and North Carolina here on the state law match will power five days. Northwestern and Kansas, but if you're Boston College, you know you got Notre Dame because of ACC. Then you make sure Maine and UConn, and then you have the 50-50 game against Rutgers. But Georgia Tech, <laughs> Georgia at the end of the year, not fun, right? Old Miss at UCF. Those are the other two non-conference games. Along Western Carolina, of course. Georgia. And if that's enough, it's not, that's not enough of an issue. Look at this for their final six. At FSU. At Vatech, us November 12th, at Carolina, and then of course at Georgia. Oh, and by the way, they open with Clemson. Now, will there be a, there will be an upset possibly? And maybe winning at home against Virginia or us is possible. I just don't see that that ladder. But this is a promising team. It needs to be stronger. And it and their schedule is brutal. Okay. They're saying three and a half wins. You want to know something? Listen, I, I want to see Georgia Tech do well. I want to see him, see Jeff Collins take that next step. But with that schedule on the back end being that brutal and that schedule overall being extremely brutal, I just don't see three and a half wins. I see at most, at most two wins. I'm going to go 2-10 and 10 for Georgia Tech in 2022. In part 11 of the 2022 opponent preview series, I'm going to preview the Clemson Tigers.